What's up my Sunshine Gunners, it's the Sunshine here, so this is my review of SummerSlam 2022. The first SummerSlam take place in the month of July, instead of the traditional August. Anyway, so the first match to kick off SummerSlam 2022, we got Bianca Belair defending the Raw Women's Championship against Becky Lynch. Um, This was a good opener. I prefer that match at WrestleMania early this year was a bit better, that's just me, but on the flip side, still a good match. Um, the small portion of the match, you had Becky uh, trying to work the arm of Bianca, trying to make uh, Bianca tap out with the disarmor. I don't, yeah, I don't think Becky managed to lock in the sub submission hold. Um, Bianca kicked out of the, um, what's it called, the diamond dust, I think it was kind of like, like a, a cutter. And the manhandle slam by Becky. Um, uh, yeah, Bianca trying to hit Becky with the KOD. Um, she managed to hit the finisher outside of the ring. Um, that almost ended in a can out win for Bianca, but Becky managed to gather it, get it in the ring in the last uh, second. Um, in the end, Bianca managed to hit the finisher onto Becky inside of the ring to win this match and retain. The Raw Women's Championship. Um, this was a good match. You know, it's funny that it's nearly one year since the, the first match. You know, at last year's SummerSlam, that was so anticlimactic. You know, having like I know the know the story was supposed to be Bianca versus Sasha Banks, but um, yeah, um, you know they go with uh, Becky Lynch and Bianca on paper. The first match should be you thought that's going to be good, but instead it was. A, it was a squash, you know, Becky won it in split seconds, and they had matches on Raw. Don't forget they had the match on pay-per-view. And then, the, yeah, the fight at WrestleMania this year, and now this is this is the blow-off. Yeah, I hope it's the blow-off, you know. Yeah, and afterwards you had uh, Becky um, and Bianca, you know, you basically had Bia you know, want, uh, Becky wants Bianca to shake her hand. And she managed to um, shake it, they, they hug it out. Um, I thought it was going to be a rouge, you know, you know, trying to lock uh, Bianca with the disarmor. That, I, it set up their match at Class of the Castle. I hope not, but um, we got, uh, yeah, we got the, um, the return of Bailey. We haven't saw Bailey for almost a year. She suffered a knee injury, and she's now formed a faction with the return of not just her, with uh, Dakota Kai. Um, she got released early this year, and Eero Shirai, they're, now they're calling her Eero Sky, I think that's stupid, they need to stop doing, like, name changing, they did it with, uh, Pete Dunn. they called him Butch, I did a video on it, that is stupid, calling, calling him Butch, um, they called, um, Walter Hahn, uh, Gunther, Gunther, it was Gunther Stark, then, just Gunther, they called, um, you know, they, I think they also changed, given the, also they changed names with, uh, what was it, uh, Marcel Buffel and Fabian Eitner. Uh, I think, um, I think, was it, Mar was it, Booth was it, Marcel Buffel is now uh, Lufit Kaiser. I don't know who, you know, also they changed the name of, uh, Fabian Eitner. Um, they changed the names of the Grizzly Young veterans, you know, they're no longer, uh, Zach Gibson and James Drake. I hate that, man. They also they changed the names of they changed uh was it Kaylee Ray's uh name with a stupid name I hate that they've been doing it for one year it's stupid it's not getting them over but um anyway so um they teasing like that it's gonna be a brawl I I think it would be better off having Bailey and his new group you know attacking Bianca and Becky um to you know set up the next program but um they're, they're kind of teasing like this you know your Becky want want uh, them to fight but Bailey. Eero, I'm gonna call it Eero Shirai, not Eero Sky. Give me a fucking break. And Dikoa kind of left the um, left the ring, and that was it. This is probably set up a tag team match at um, Clash of the Castle in September because there is no pay per views in August. Yeah, the yeah the by yeah the by time this video is out, it's the first day of August. Anyway, but besides, that, I think this was a good match. It's a good way to end the rivalry between Becky and Bianca. I'm glad Bianca. Um, you know, is still the reigning defendant women's champion. I I could see her dropping the belt to Bailey probably later on in the autumn. So anyway, so the next match, uh, we got um, yeah, Logan Paul in his second 
professional wrestling match because he got his first match in the tag team match between him and the Miz taking on the Mysterios at WrestleMania early this year, taking on the Miz with Maurice and Tommaso Ciampa. They named him Ciampa now. I don't want to get into this whole name changing shit. It's stupid. It's not getting them over. Calling them just Ciampa, showing his name. It's stupid. I don't get it. But um, but besides that, I think it was a good match. I, I think Logan Paul, like, he is a good worker. You know, he's just, like, you know, he's did, you know, um, he did well in this match. You know, it's a high flying spots, you know, um, they did like some kicks, um, they cannot, they're not referring to the yes lot, the yes chat, uh, doing, you know, the every time Miz does, you know, like every time Daniel Bryan and the Miz doing the kick, they did the whole, and the fans chant yes, you, they, they stopped doing it now because, you know, uh, Bryan is now in AEW, but, um, anyway, so, uh, he, he did it on the Miz, um, Logan Poor, um, also, he did, like, um, yeah, yeah, Logan Poor did, like, um, I think he, he kind of put the miss through it, the announce table, he kind of hit the frog splash off the top rope and threw the announce table outside of the ring, that was cool, uh, Chamaso Tampa, I'm gonna call him, I'm gonna call him Chamaso Champa. yeah, call him Champa is stupid, man, so, yeah, the referee ejected Champa out of the, out of ringside, he refused, and then you got AJ Styles theme music, play and AJ came out of nowhere, attack Champa, chase him out of the ring. Uh in the end, uh yeah you had um yeah you had uh Mayor's kicked out of the phenomenal forearm by Logan Poor. In the end, um yeah Maurice trying to get involved. Mayor's grabs I think it was a chain or something, I don't know, of Logan Poor trying to hit Logan with it, but he, he almost accidentally not almost knocked Maurice out uh, off the ring eight prone, sorry I'm talking too fast by the way. <sighs> yeah, um, uh, but yeah, he almost hit and knocked his own wife uh, off the ring eight prone. In the end, Logan Paul hit the skull crushing finale onto the Miz for the win. Yeah, he got revenge, you know, I can see my gut feeling they're going to continue the rivalry, but I hope not, I hope it's the one a one-off, but so let's move on to the next match. So match number two... Uh, no, match number three, by the way. So, yeah. So, match number three. Um, so, yeah, match number three. Um, this is for the United States Championship. Uh, Bobby Lashley taking on Austin Theory. Oh, they, they, call, him, they call him Theory, but I'm going to call him Austin Theory. Um, this is the same situation of the first match at Money in the Bank. Same result. It was an okay match. Um, in the end, Lashley um, locked in the, um, yeah, the, um, the hurt lock for the win, so, yeah, you know, I think that, I think they, like, Lashley's gonna have, I think they'll probably have Lashley a dominant run as the United States Champion, I think he'll probably hold, drop it somewhere in the autumn time, probably in October, November time, you know, um, it's right, it makes sense, because he just won the belt at Money in the Bank, you know, because they need, they need a new challenger for Lashley now, um, I don't know, they're gonna turn him heel, we don't know, they need more, cha fresh new challenges, man, I feel like, um, the roster is a bit thin, uh, but um, yeah. Um, so moving on to the next match. So match number four, um, that is a no DQ tag team match. Uh, we got the Mysterios, Ray and Dominic Mysterio taking on um, the Judgment Day. Representing the Judgment Day is um, yeah, our, uh, Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Rhea Ripley's first pay per view appearance since the accident. You know, she suffered a brain injury. Hope she. Yeah, I'm glad she made a, a, a fully good recovery. Uh, the match was fun. I, I like this match. I think people will be a bit disappointed. I thought, I thought when they announced a no DQ match, I thought it's going to be like with tables and ladder, not ladders, but tables and candlesticks. Typical WWE no DQ matches in this era, but unfortunately they didn't went overboard with it. I think the one mode of the match, um, yeah, Mysterio grabbed the chair. And kind of ride on the chair. It's more like a. It's not like a baseball slide and drop kick. It was. You kind of slide the chair into the middle rope onto. I think it was Balor or 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 Damian Priest. Um, because the Mysterios, the more of the more of the agility. Balor's also with the agility, and Priest is more of the strength. You know, it wasn't a great match. It was a good match. It was a fun match to watch. Uh, Rhea Ripley got involved, um, she, you know, because the Mysterios were going for the, a double 619, 
But um, yeah, Rhea stopped. Um, yeah, stopped them. I think he stopped Dominic. Hit uh, Dominic with a. I think it was a snake eyes onto the ring apron. Then we got the return of Edge. He came out with the flames and wearing the sunglasses and a, a, a good haircut. Um, came, you know, came to the ring, hit Balor and Priest with the spear, helping the Mysterios. Um, got the victory, helping his fellow SmackDown Six slash. Ruthless Aggression Era co-star because I call I call like in the top I think like the top five wrestlers in the Ruthless Aggression Era you can throw in Undertaker and Triple H you know you know they're also part of that era including Shawn Michaels I think like the top five carried that Ruthless Aggression Era in the um in the second half of that period were were John Cena Batista Randy Orton and Edge so. But um, anyway, um, this is probably set up a yeah. This is probably set up the next match at Clash of the Castle. I think the Judgment Day um probably had a new member. Yeah, I, I said in my prediction video they dropped the ball on this Judgment Day. Having Edge getting kicked out of the group that is fucking stupid. I think that group had some potential with Edge. I don't mind Balor be part of the group. I don't mind him be part of the Judgment Day, but have. Edge kicked out and and Balor become the leader. It's just dumb and stupid. But um, um, I can see Edge getting a, a, one more run as the world champion probably next year because you know because I, I want to see Edge um have one more run as the world champion for two reasons. Like one, he never like his last world title in was way back in a uh, 2011. He never uh dropped the title. And second, you know um he's Get, you know, his time is running out for Edge, you know, because he's not well, nearly 50. I think he's around in his late 40s, so I, I can see him winning the world title next year. So so let's uh, move it on to the next match. So the, so the next match, that is match number five. Um, uh, We got Pat McAfee taking on Happy Corbin, trying to keep it short and simple. It was an, o yeah, it was an okay match, you know, it was just what it is, an okay match. Um, you had basically, um, you know, basically, uh, yeah, I think you hit, um, yeah, Corbin hit, it was basically punch, 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 kick, 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 um, but, um, anyway, so, um, you know, you had one more of the match you had, basically it was more trash talking, you had Corbin grab the headphones, you know, talking shit towards, um, McAfee's parents, you had Michael Cole, he's, um, yeah, he's supporting McAfee because he's, he's a, he's commentary, uh, partner. But um, trying to keep it keep it short and simple. It was okay. Like I said, nothing terrible. It wasn't bad. It's similar to uh, the Th Lashley Theory match from earlier. Adrian McAfee just hit the um, cold red onto Corbin for the win. Don't want to. This has got to be a one match off. I don't want to see another match. You know, Jesus Christ. Um, so far, part of McAfee's matches in the main roster are okay. His match with Theory at WrestleMania early this year was okay. This was okay. I think his best performance as a pro wrestler in the WWE was his um his performance in the War Games match against the Honest Beard Era in was it in 2020. So moving on to match number six. Uh, match uh, before that, um, there was two segments uh, in this um show. You had um basically um yeah the Drew McIntyre like showing up. You know, sort of about bringing up hyping up the um main event. And then that re didn't really serve a purpose. I'm not going to put it in the bag. It didn't really do nothing for me. Uh, you had R Rollins and Riddle on brawling. You know, because I think the word originally it was posted. They had, should have had the match on the show. Unfortunately, Riddle, Matt Riddle got hurt. I think they'll probably have a match at Clash of the Castle. So, because Orton also is hurt as well. So, I'll get to more of that uh, later on. So... You see, yeah, match number six. This is for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. The Usos defended the belt against uh, the Street Profits with Jeff Jarrett as the special guest referee. Um, she, uh, he is the hometown boy. It's funny, like they popped for Bianca. I never knew Bianca's from Nashville, Tennessee. You know, yeah, it was a win for the hometown girl. But anyway, so he came out with his 1990s um the country. Yeah, his old mid 90s um early mid 90s the music, not his. Theme music in the Attitude Era. I wish I, yeah, they would never would play his uh, My World theme from TNA or his theme music from WCW. I wish they just like came out with with his WCW theme. That's just me. 
Anyway, um, the match was good. I really liked this match, but I think their match of Money in the Bank was a bit better. That's just me. Um, it was really good. It was um, a lot of near falls. Um, yeah, the whole some some yeah the like the first half of the of this match you had the Usos working on um, I think it was Angelo Dawkins stopping um, st you know like avoiding Dawkins did the like, doing the hot tag towards M Montez Ford. It was I, I think it was really good. Um, you had uh, I think Ford did like a suicide dive or what kind of uh, um, uh, dive and also. I forgot. Go back to the McAfee and Corbin match. You know he uh, hit the was it the Swanton Palm BD, I think it's called onto um, Corbin. You know I've got to mention it uh, when I talk about that match. So anyway, get, let's go back to the Tag and Tell match. Um, a lot of near falls. Yeah, yeah, a lot of near falls. You know breaking out. You know the Usos did the um um the the Uso splash. Um, you know kept near fall. I think Ford hit the made was it made from the heavens near fall. You know, break up the pin. Uh, in the end, uh, the Usos hit the um, the one deed uh, onto, I think it was Ford or Dawkins to win this match and retain the Tag Team Championship. So, yeah, they need more challenges for the Usos, man. You know, that's the problem with the Tag Team. I think mean, Finn's mistake is breaking up the Tag Team division, both were on SmackDown, you know, five years ago. It's just like, really? They never have an established Tag Team division for years, probably in... Probably you could say around the Rufus Aggression era. I say around the other two era, you had like like tag teams like the Hardys, Edge Christian, and the Dudleys and APA. But um, they need more. They need to rebuild that tag team division, man. You know, um, um, you know, now Triple H is now in charge. You know, he can probably do it. You know, could, you know, you know, focus more on tag team wrestling. Um, but um, anyway, so. It was a good match. I thought like Jarrett will properly. I feel like Jarrett. I think the Street Profits were acting not heelish, but he was getting in the face of Jarrett. You thought like Jarrett's gonna like um, uh, hit one of the tag teams with the the guitar shot or you know. But um, it's just what it. That he was kind of there because the show was in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, so moving on to match number seven. Match number seven. This is for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, Liv Morgan defending the belt against Ronda Rousey. Um, this is the worst match of the night for me. Ma I find it boring, the whole bulk of the match. You had Ronda working the arm of Liv Morgan, trying to make her tap out with the arm, with the arm, with the arm bar. The ending was a bit, bit weird. Um, yeah, and Liv was selling it like she actually salt broke her arm. Um, in the end, uh, Ronda, like, basically locked, this submission hold on to Liv. Liv kind of like counted it into a roll up, and then by the time the referee on yeah, and the referee did the free count, and then all of a sudden Liv tapping out from the arm bar, and this is kind of weird. When Liv, the by the time the referee almost like did it for the third time, Liv was immediately tapped out. This is very confusing, and it's kind of eh. But, uh, yeah, and afterwards you had, uh, basically, Ronda attack Liv, lock in the armbar, he, she did it, he did it, she did it, he also did he, she did it, sorry, she did it with the, the referee, um, so, basically, my gut feeling they're gonna do another match at Clash of the Castle, I don't wanna see Ronda winning it, I think her title reign has been a flop, I think, I'm getting sick of Ronda at this moment in time, I think I'm just done with her, man. I think she's very under. I think she's very overrated. She was pushed. The reason why she's got that push because her run in MMA, because she's an okay good in the ring. Her 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 ring skills is fine. That's cool. I think she's not a good talker. She has no personality, no charisma. I yeah. I think the what yeah. It's the one thing it's holding her back is her mic skills, and also she lacks personality, and charisma. Like her acting. Why do you think her acting career? was not that good because she lacks personality and charisma. She has no facial expression with him so uh, of her, sorry. My apologies, but um but I don't want to see Ronda uh, my gut thing she's going to she's going to get she's going to drop the title to Ronda or Charlotte because she is coming back very soon, so uh but and uh, my gut thing is going to be a triple threat match at Clash of the Castle, you know, Liv, Charlotte and Ronda. And that's it. And then one of them is going to uh, drop. Basically, she's going to drop the tile to one of them. I don't want to see that. So, 
Anyway, so moving on to the main event. Um, this is a last man stand match for the Undisputed Championship. Uh, Roman Reigns, the Tribal Chief, defending the belt against Brock Lesnar. Lesnar came out driving a tractor. Um, and this was good. This is the best match in the history of the Roman Reigns, um, uh, Brock Lesnar feud. You know, they've been feuding for eight years, or oh, seven years now, since the, since WrestleMania 31. Um, this was good. I really like it. You know, they were brawling. Um, he had a lot of table spots, you know, you know, pointing each other with tables. You know, he had, uh, basically, um, you know, Bro Roman hit, uh, Brock with the Simone drop through the table, um, um, there's one multiple spot in this match, you know, basically, you know, pull, you know, you basically had, um, uh, Brock basically pick up Roman, put him in the forklift, and, and managed to p drop him on, off into the ring, then he kind of, he kind of went back onto that tractor, tipped the ring up, and Roman fall out of the really f to tumbling outside the ring. I thought he's he's end up be badly hurt. He didn't. Um, it's really good. I like um the Usos got involved trying to help Roman wins. They got attacked by the um by Brock. You know F Austin Theory came out trying to cash his money in the bank briefcase. I don't want to see a, a, a Austin Theory towel run. That'd be stupid. I want to get into it for, in this video. I think uh, Brock came with the F five. Heyman got involved. That interaction with Paul Heyman was cool. He said, "He's my tribal chief." He kind of confronted Brock. Say, "He's my tribal chief. Leave him alone." And Brock basically put um, Heyman through the table. And every time, you know, and Brock always he's basically trying to be Superman. Every time, like you know, he, like basically uh, Roman hits Brock with two spears. He Brock uh, always gets up, and then he used theories money in the briefcase. Hit Brock multiple times, getting up. And he not hit Brock in the head with the WWE and the Universal Tile Belt, getting up. So, in the end, um, you know the Usos and Roman buried Brock into with still steps and the broken piece of the announce table to win this match. And yet, yeah, Roman is still the reigning, defending, uh, undisputed champion. You know, I don't really know how I call it the undisputed Universal Champion or the undisputed WWE Championship uh, Champion. You know, that, that was fucking stupid years ago. I'm going off the topic. You know, years ago they call it the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Because, yeah, they just uni they just unified both the WWE and World title. That was a decade ago. But um, anyway, so, yeah, Roman, Roman retains. I, I think it was the right decision. I don't want to see Brock um, winning it, you know. I get with, um you know, Brock, you know, with the tractor. It matches gimmick because the show's in Tennessee. Um, I like Brock his new gimmick, you know, the tra the farmer boy, the cowboy, you know, whatever you call him, you know, he's like he's better than just the the Brock from since he came to the since he debuted uh returned to the company a decade ago, you know, just you know, with Paul Heyman just standing, you know, standing there, not interacting, you know, he's interacting. He's he's kinda of grown on me, man, but he doesn't really need the championship, you know, once he brought in I got, with Feuds without the championship, you know, have a mini feud, whether it's a, they need, I don't know, you know, I don't want to see Brock going for the ch title ever again. You can put him in a not, you can put him with someone, but you don't need him having winning the title. So it's just like um, you don't need that, you know. But um, yeah, um, you know, there's, there, I think you can have a, a good feud. You can have a good feud with um, I don't know. You can have a good uh, Sheamus. You can have a good feud with Sheamus. But um, yeah, um, I think this is the best. Um, I think this is the best Brock match in his second run in the company. I think his best match in Brock Lesnar's second run in the company was against the Undertaker at um, Hell in the Cell 2015. This is it. This is the second place. It's up there. Um, it's way better than the disappointing Brock Lesnar matches in recent years against Ambrose, against Cena, against m multiple matches against Reigns and Styles. You know, it's still a good match, but it was too much of Suplex City and F5s and, yeah, was, and Rollins, you know. This was good, um, but, um, yeah, I got a team with Roman right now. I think Roman, I got a team that's going to be uh, Roman and Drew at Clash of the, Ch uh, Clash of the Castle, sorry. Um, I, I can see uh, Roman's tower reign, I think his tower reign is at a, nearly at an end. I think 
Drew winning the title will be a right decision for him. Because so far, I know they had, they had met a few bef once before, you know, the days with the Dogs and War and Shield feud back, what, in 2018? Uh, but, um, in 2019, actually, but, um, you know, you got Roman as the top heel, Drew is the top babyface, they need to do this match, you know, they should have done it on this show, but, um, they're saving that Clash of the Castle, um, so, um, it'd be cool to see Drew winning the belt from Roman, I think Roman, I think this is wrong, I, I compare Roman's reigns, um, <laughs> Roman's tile reign to CM Punk's tile reign from 2012, you know, 10 years ago, you know, it's, they both put the the prestige into the title. Typical, the wrestler makes the belt. You know, you know Roman's title reigns last for two years. You know, I think I enjoy his matches. You know, I think this is his first, well, the best match since probably since last year against you know, Kevin Owens. Um, um, I think yeah, Kevin Owens. Um, uh, because the last few matches of Roman. Uh, title matches on pay-per-view they were okay but a little bit a little bit lackluster so anyway so my final rating of this show my final rating for uh, SummerSlam 2022 I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 this is a really good show in my opinion this is the best show best SummerSlam since 2013 um I get years ago I overpraised SummerSlam 2019 it was a good show by the way but I kind of overpraised it I said it like it was the best uh show since SummerSlam 2011 because of it was known for uh, Randy Orton, Christian, and John Cena, Singapore Punk, the Undisputed Championship, but, um, nah. I've, I've never seen 2013 yet, um, that was a good show, but, um, this show was also good. The only thing in the bad has to be, uh, Ronda versus Liv, the SmackDown Women's Championship. The okay is the okay, like, uh, Lashley versus Theory, McAfee versus Corbin. Um, it started out good and ended good with, you know, you had the, um, you know, I like the, uh, the Raw Women's Tower match. I like, uh, Logan Port versus The Miz, and I like, um, yeah, the tag team match, no DQ tag team match. It was good between Mysterios versus Balor and Priest. That was just, um, it was all about Edge returning. Um, I like the, um, the SmackDown, not SmackDown, the, um, the Universal, uh, Undisputed Championship match, you know, the Usos versus Street Profits. And plus the main event, you know, that was fun. That was a, you know, a good match, you know. You know, I, I say this show is the best show of the year for the WWE, you know. I think some of the shows I cover this year in the, in, in the current product of the main roster have been okay to good shows, but not a great one. But this was a good show, so... Anyway, this, this, I hope you enjoy my review of WWE SummerSlam 2022. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Smash the like button, click the like, click the bell. Subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. Be part of the Central Unit for more wrestling videos. More. Um, Clash of the Castle. I will review that show. I don't think I'm going to review All Out. Um, I don't know, because I'm on holiday in set next month, so... We'll see. It's we'll see. So anyway, so ho yeah, hope you enjoyed, folks. That's my review of SummerSlam 2022. I give it a thumbs up. Uh, yeah, I, I give it two thumbs up actually.